live from Washington, D.C. Jay Sekulow Live. Phone lines are open for your questions right now. And now, Chief Counsel for the American Center for Law and Justice, Jay Sekulow. Welcome, everybody, to a series of two special broadcasts. These are going to be dealing with the terrorist attack that took place in Orlando, Florida, and also the follow-up of what is taking place in Washington, D.C. We first start with the largest terrorist attack in the United States since 9-11 took place in Orlando, Florida. What we're going to discuss, we're going to take you back into the radio studios in just a moment, give you a sense of the urgency in the calls that came in and the analysis we put forward. Uh, this gives you a real sense of what was happening. Let's take a look inside. Today as Americans, we grieve the brutal murder of dozens. We stand with the people of Orlando who have endured a terrible attack on their city. We know enough to say that this was an act of terror and an act of hate. Let's just call it what it is. They're in a war with us. We need to be in a war with them. We need to take it to them. They've established a caliphate. Crush it is the answer. We are the United States of America. We have to start acting like it. We've got a generation to protect, but we don't have an option here. Hi, everyone. Welcome to the broadcast. Let me give you our full analysis to start with here. First of all, understand this. This is the largest terror attack in the United States since 9-11. Let me say that again so you understand what we're dealing with. This is the largest terror attack in the United States since 9-11. There are over 49 people dead, Americans, and 53 in the hospital, many in critical uh, life or death struggles right now for those individuals that are in the hospital. There is also a significant intelligence aspect of this, an intelligence feature on this. And we're going to get into some of the gaps and lapses that took place here. Omar Mateen had been interviewed by the FBI twice. He had access to weaponry through his job. There were concerns raised at his job. His political correctness gone such a significant level here that the inability to call the enemy what it is, radical jihadist terrorist, impacting our internal intelligence capabilities to stop these events. Jordan, that's something we've got to look at. This individual twice has been, uh, was interviewed by the FBI, 2013 and 2014. It was attending the same mosque as an American uh, ISIS suicide bomber in Syria and that happened a couple of years ago, and those individuals attended the same mosque. Right. So the FBI has twice interviewed this individual, and yet still uh, either something has lapsed in our the way they, they are allowed to move forward with their investigations or act on the information received, and it's just too easy for these individuals who later go on to carry out attacks to explain it away. All right, we also know this. He was interviewed, as you said, by the FBI twice. He was born in uh, to the U.S. In, in the United States to Afghan parents. His father has pledged allegiance to the Taliban. He pledged allegiance to ISIS during the course of the attacks here. ISIS has claimed responsibility for this. Was there a security failure here? We're going to give you a legal analysis that points to that fact. We think there is. One of the fundamental aspects of what's missing in this is that ISIS has declared war on the West, including the United States. And of course, we've seen that now with multiple actions in the United States. Terrorist actions. We need to declare war on them. That's a specific request out of the United States Congress. We've got a petition putting forward that exact position at ACLJ.org. I'm going to urge you right now to join with over 100,000 Americans in standing with our military so they have the wherewithal to take on this foe. ACLJ.org or 1-877-989-2255. That's ACLJ.org or 877-989-2255. 
The Islamic State, ISIS, wants to destroy America and eradicate Christianity. Jihadists pledging allegiance to ISIS and radical Islam have attacked America, slaughtering dozens of Americans in multiple terrorist attacks. President Obama refuses to acknowledge the enemy. His administration has failed to protect us. ISIS is at war with us. We must wage war against ISIS. At the ACLJ, we've developed a critical five-point strategy to defeat and destroy this jihadist enemy. We have five key steps to defeat ISIS. One, name the enemy, Islamic jihadists. Two, fix our broken intelligence. Three, ramp up undercover stings to smoke out jihadists at home. Four, declare war on ISIS. And five, unleash full U.S. military might to utterly destroy ISIS. Stand with us, add your name to our new petition right now. Call 1-877-989-2255. That's 1-877-989-2255 or add your name online, aclj.org. As I mentioned before the break, the issue of political correctness is significant. When you see intelligence agencies being told, don't use words like jihadist, don't use the word like Muslim, don't use the word like Sharia, there's this general sense that you cannot identify the enemy, and that has real consequences both in the battlefield but for our country as a whole. This is not an isolated incident. This is not a tragedy. This is not something horrific. It's all of that, but it is a terrorist attack by Islamic jihadists. The president doesn't want to call it that. We do. We are joined and very fortunate to have with us. He's been on Fox News all weekend. Dr. Sebastian Gorka is the Major General Matthew C. Horner, Distinguished Chair in Military, Theater, uh, Military Theory at the Marine Corps University. He has a brand new book out, which you must get, Defeating Jihad, The Winnable War. Uh, Sebastian, thanks for being with us. We really appreciate it. Absolutely. It's a pleasure. You, you do amazing work, Jay. Thank you. I want, I've been listening to you all weekend, and I thought you have really, really put this in the right perspective. You had the president come out. He calls it an act of terror, but doesn't want to name it Islamic terror. We've talked about some of the failures of, of uh, intelligence failures that have taken place here. Your assessment first of what we're dealing with in Orlando. Well, it's, it's exactly what I wrote Defeating Jihad about. It is a global jihadi movement. They brought the war to America, and Americans need to understand that this, this subhuman individual is the 103rd ISIS supporter that we have arrested or killed on U.S. soil in the last two years. If people don't understand, after the double Paris attacks, after Brussels, San Bernardino, and Orlando, that we are at war with an enemy who wishes to destroy us, then nothing will wake them up. We look at the situation as it applies now. There were multiple FBI briefings of this guy, questioning of this individual. Training manuals were scrubbed of words like Islamic Jihad radicalism. Absolutely. So the FBI, apparently at the behest of the Justice Department, uh, undertook an effort to purge training manuals of references to radical Islam. Um, and I think uh, this is all part of an effort, uh, whether it's inadvertent or yeah. deliberate, that hamstrongs uh, American law enforcement officials. So do you sense, uh, Sebastian, is there a – is the political correctness run so deep in the agencies right now because of the president's policies that they are afraid to call it what it is? It was the Civil Rights Division of the Department of Justice under yeah. the express orders of the White House. The White House told the chairman of the Joint Chiefs and the Department of Justice to scrub and censor all counterterrorism training in U.S. government. That means the FBI, the military. It means that you couldn't even use the word jihad. Political correctness is completely out of control, Jay, and it has cost lives in America. Yeah. So let me follow up question then. To this attack that took place, we have 49 Americans dead. 53 in the hospital and many in critical life uh, and death struggles right now. Your sense on what needs to be happening, what needs to take place, what is it that, we, I mean, there's a lot we're missing, but what needs to happen going forward? Well, three, three things, and they're all detailed in defeating jihad. Number one, you have to get politics and especially political correctness out of the threat assessment. None of this censorship, none of this saying what you can and cannot say. We've got to talk honestly about the enemy, that it is global jihadism, that there is a religious narrative, and that the enemy is evil and must be crushed. Second, we have to help our Sunni allies, because they need to be the face of this war. We have to help the Jordanians and the Egyptians 
close with and destroy ISIS. But they will not do that right now because they do not trust the Obama administration and for good reason. And lastly, taking a leaf out of the Cold War, we have to understand that killing or arresting terrorists is not a good metric. We have to defeat their ideology. We have to delegitimize it. And just like the Cold War, when we delegitimize the ideology of communism, we have to do the same with global jihadism. Those three things together, and we could destroy this scourge within just a matter of months. You mentioned the ideology. I want to follow up on that because I think this is an ideological battle. I've written about it. You've written extensively about it. This is an ideological war. But when you're dealing with an ideological war, you got to know the ideology of the enemy. Uh, and the fact is that, you know, it's, they're trying to draw these distinctions between was this ISIS controlled and ordered or was it ISIS inspired? Does any of that make a difference anymore? Absolutely not. Who cares? This is why we've become so vulnerable. Right. Because we're always looking for that, that magic paper trail, that love note, that tweet, that command and control nexus. It is irrelevant whether I am under the command and control of Abu Bakr or whether I simply pledge allegiance on Facebook and then kill 49 people. What difference does it make to the 49 people? Nothing. So when you look at the situation, Sebastian, right now, as you see it, is, is this individual type of activity or small group when we saw that in, in Brussels, it was a larger group than this. But these aren't these aren't armies. We're talking about small cells, individuals, two or three, five people. Is this the model that ISIS is putting forward? And is this putting the rest of the country domestically? Do we have a – I mean, obviously we do in light of Orlando. This is a serious threat to the United States. But is this the new model of how they're going to operate? Absolutely, Jay. You asked the right question. If you, if you go to my website, thegorkabriefing.com, my wife and I published a paper just before San Bernardino. Uh, one statistic your listeners must be familiar with. Of all the people we have arrested or apprehended or killed in America in the last year and a half that have linked themselves to ISIS, only 50% wanted to go and fight in the Middle East. Mm. A full third, 33%, had decided the best way to serve the new caliph, the new emperor of Islam, is to kill infidels on U.S. soil. The war is here. They have brought it back home. And this is exactly what we should have expected after Paris, Brussels and San Bernardino. Thanks for coming on. I know you have had a jammed weekend and a a very busy day. And I look forward to having you back on. Anytime. My pleasure, Jay. Thank you. I I think you got a great assessment, folks. Uh, Sebastian's been on uh, Fox all weekend on this. And Jordan, I think it points to the reality that we've had. We've laid out the massive failure of intelligence. We now have a war that is on our shores again. It has always been on our shores. They're just now implementing it. We've got to have change at the top. Yeah, and it takes. it's going to take a lot of intelligence, a lot of support for our law enforcement community, and a refocusing of those assets. Obviously, these people can be identified. They have been identified. That's not the issue. The issue is making sure that law enforcement has the power to take action to prevent them from then uh, later on carrying out these attacks, whether that's change in our laws or just more support. I mean, what we're talking about right now is, is really law enforcement that's been misdirected or to look a different way and not focus on a community yep. which is posing serious threats to our country. We've got a lot more ahead, so you're going to want to stay tuned, including a five-step plan that we've put forward where we think Congress needs to take specific action to combat the real threat of ISIS. And I'm going to urge you right now to join with over 100,000 Americans in standing with our military so they have the wherewithal to take on this foe. ACLJ.org or 1-877-877. 989-2255. That's ACLJ.org or 877-989-2255. The Islamic State, ISIS, wants to destroy America and eradicate Christianity. Jihadists pledging allegiance to ISIS and radical Islam have attacked America, slaughtering dozens of Americans in multiple terrorist attacks. President Obama refuses to acknowledge the enemy. His administration has failed to protect us. ISIS is at war with us. We must wage war against ISIS. At the ACLJ, we've developed a critical five-point strategy to defeat and destroy this jihadist enemy. We have five key steps to defeat ISIS.
ISIS. One, name the enemy, Islamic Jihadists. Two, fix our broken intelligence. Three, ramp up undercover stings to smoke out jihadists at home. Four, declare war on ISIS. And five, unleash full U.S. military might to utterly destroy ISIS. Stand with us, add your name to our new petition right now. Call 1-877-989-2255. That's 1-877-989-2255. Or add your name online, aclj.org. After the largest terrorist attack on U.S. soil since 9-11, it's time for the U.S. government and the American people to finally take concrete actions to destroy Islamic Jihad once and for all. How many more Americans must be slaughtered before we realize that ISIS and other Islamic Jihadist organizations are at war with us? The ACLJ recommends the following five steps to defeat Islamic terror. Number one, we must focus on protecting human life rather than protecting people from being offended. Political correctness prevents the nation's leaders from facing the actual threat posed by Islamic jihadists. This is not the time to cut out references to Islamic terrorism in the briefings of our national security officers. We must focus on the threat we face. Number two, the U.S. government needs to recognize and fix systematic problems within our intelligence agencies. Just like the terrorist attacks at Fort Hood, San Bernardino, and the Boston Marathon bombing, security failures occurred before Omar Mateen struck Orlando. The FBI twice investigated Mateen for possible ties to terrorist organizations. In both cases, the FBI closed the investigation, finding the claims to be inconclusive. FBI Director James Comey stated that he doesn't think there's anything the FBI should have done differently. Number three, consistent with the emphasis on improved intelligence, the U.S. needs to continue to ramp up its undercover sting operations designed to smoke out terrorists. Since social media has given extremists a cloak of anonymity, these undercover stings online and in person are vital to gathering evidence and deterring possible attacks in the United States. Number four, the United States government must be prepared to unleash the full force of its military in order to deprive ISIS of its strongholds in Syria and Iraq. This means a vigorous bombing campaign in Iraq and elsewhere against known military targets. Islamic terrorism requires us to show strength in destroying the hubs of these networks so that the rest of their followers will see them for what they truly are. Number five, the ACLJ calls on U.S. leaders, including members of Congress, to debate and pass a resolution declaring war on ISIS, just as ISIS has declared war on us. This move would reinforce the notion that this fight is a true priority for all Americans, irrespective of their political affiliation. These are common sense steps we can and should take to end this evil once and for all. This is why we don't stop fighting until Islamic Jihad is rooted out and the American homeland is once again safe and secure. Hey, welcome back to the broadcast, everyone. We're going to have some sound from the President of the United States addressing this. He just said, I want to destroy ISIL. By the way, stop calling ISIS ISIL. When you're defining somebody by their their aspirations, ISIS is the Islamic State in Syria and Iraq, which is where they are. They're in Syria and Iraq. ISIL is the Islamic State, also includes the Levant. That's the L. The Levant is the entire Middle East, including Israel. Don't define them by their aspirations. Uh I'm going to go to Professor Hutchison in a moment, but I want to go to Jordan first here. The president is speaking again today, saying this was pre-planned to have this meeting anyways. The fact of the matter is there is a serious and significant failure of intelligence that has to be addressed. Yeah, absolutely. And that failure of intelligence is the fact that these individuals are located. They can be found by our law enforcement officials. They have the ability to uh, identify them. The question is, do they have the resources available by the administration to continue tracking them, to continue their surveillance programs, to make sure he was on a watch list for a period of time. If he was continued to be on that watch list, they FBI would have been notified when he tried to purchase uh, the weapon. That would have been a, a telltale sign. But instead, he was removed from that watch list uh, because it was considered uh, to be a situation yep. where it was individuals outs- that were putting the pressure on him. 
that they were the reason why it was because of a racial issue right. and a profiling issue, religious issue, and not and that's why he was making these uh, kind of inflammatory statements yep. to his coworkers. Yep. Interesting. The president did say, and I will say this: he said we, he needs to destroy ISIL. We're going to get that comment. I mean, I don't like it called ISIL. I do like the word destroy. <laughs> I'm glad he said that. All right, we said yesterday on the broadcast that we're going to give you five concrete action points. Uh, we don't just talk about the issues here. We put policies forward. We put legal analysis forward. Than takes these up to Washington. Uh, it's called Five Steps to Fight Radical Islamic Terror. Harry, let's go through this. Responding to the issues, we recommend the fi- following five steps. Let's go with number one. I want to. I'll read it. We must focus on protecting human life rather than protecting people from being offended. What are we talking about there? Uh, I think political correctness uh, prevents the nation's leaders from facing the actual threat posed by Islamic jihadists. This paralyzes uh, the United States government. Yeah, and 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 our intelligence services. So, Than, let me ask you quickly to respond to these, because I want, and Jordan, I'll have that too, but Than, so number one, must focus on protecting human life rather than protecting people from being offended. The political correctness, Congress knows this is a problem. Absolutely. It comes from the top. It comes from the president. But let me just very quickly tie what Harry just said into the problem we're facing today. If if the president wasn't so insistent on denying the problem, the FBI and the intelligence community's job, Jay, it would be smaller. It would be more manageable because there would be fewer of them to track down and we might actually be able to accomplish it. Harry's exactly right. It starts with calling the enemy what it is and laying political correctness aside. Let me read number two here. After making this anti-terror effort a priority, which is what we're saying, and recognizing the true nature of our foe, the U.S. government needs to recognize and fix systematic problems within our intelligence agencies. I've outlined some of those. I have said that today again, Harry, but look, give me a kind of a quick summary. I think there is a systematic failure. They keep saying we're looking for needles in a haystack. In these cases, they had the needle. Absolutely. They, the government keeps asking the American people uh, to provide the FBI, and other law enforcement agencies with information. Yep. Uh, the government actually has information. For instance, they had information on the Fort Hood shooter. Uh, they had information, if they would look uh, or were prepared to look, with respect to the San Bernardino killer. Um, and similarly, the government had information with respect to Omar Mateen. Uh, so the government uh, needs to rectify these systematic intelligence failures. So, Jordan, when we look at that and we look at the systematic nature of the failures, which I've been pointing to, and I think there's responsibility for this, uh, there will be a resource issue. But in all of the cases that Professor Hutchinson just outlined, we had the person. Yeah, that's right. So we've been able to identify them. It's that there's been a system put in place, a policy put in place that's closed the investigations, that is directed or, or misdirected the agents in, in charge of these investigations, whether it's FBI, Homeland Security, to move on and to not focus so much on this specific uh, community. And the newest reports coming out that his wife was involved in in this and knew about this uh, occurring that she even drove him to the nightclub so he could quote scope it out i mean it tells you that again as we all know when we see something like this it doesn't happen without anyone knowing about it people are are still we have not fostered the right kind of dialogue to make people comfortable and in situation after situation what do we hear co-workers that said something to uh, law enforcement authorities and how did uh, authorities treat it as a situation where they were in the wrong yep. where they were mistreating right. him and it was okay for him to make statements about uh you know osama bin laden and terrorist groups and how he wants to kill people and that was okay because he was being mistreated by his co-workers yeah, by the way will points out the jihad couple seems to be the new norm uh I think. number three consistent with this emphasis on the improved intelligence and despite opposition from civil libertarians the u.s needs to continue to ramp up its undercover sting operation operations to smoke out isis activities and activists the fact is sting operations have gotten a bad word or becoming a bad word but the reality is they can be very successful absolutely and i think they're very very important because many of the jihadis uh, are engaged in using social media yep uh and so we need this this tool despite opposition from uh defense uh, lawyers and muslim activists uh, I think sting operations are a necessary tool. There's some evidence that the FBI is willing to um, uh, use these um, operations uh, increasingly, uh, and I think that's a good thing. Yeah, because undercover sting operations get you data. And as uh, Professor Hutchinson said, 
they are very getting very good at using social media. Number four, the United States government should take the gloves off in its response to terror, which means that it must be prepared to unleash the full force of its military in order to deprive ISIS of its strongholds in Syria and Iraq. The president did say, he calls it ISIL. I don't like that, but I do like what he said about destroying. Here's what he said. At the outset, I want to reiterate our objective in this fight. Our mission is to destroy ISIL. Since I last updated the American people on our campaign two months ago, we've seen that this continues to be a difficult fight, but we are making significant progress. All right, so we've called for that as well. You said, uh, Professor Hutchinson, take the gloves off, Harry. That's what we're saying. So what 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 should happen here? What's This is number four, and it looks like the president's going in that direction. Maybe this will step it up. Well, I think the United States should mount a serious bombing um, effort against ISIS. Um, and to this uh, point in time, the United States government has basically engaged in a restrained bombing campaign. Yeah. Um, there's evidence on the ground that suggests that the United States government refuses to bomb um, oil production facilities. Because of environmental concerns. Because of environmental concerns. Yeah. And so um, this makes little sense if you are in a fight. And keep in mind, ISIS has declared war on the United States. Right. Uh, Which goes into point five. The ACLJ calls on leaders, including members of Congress, to debate and pass a resolution declaring war on ISIS. Absolutely. Uh, and and one of the advantages of a declaration of war is it suggests that the American people are indeed unified yep. in fighting uh, an enemy and that fighting uh, ISIS is a true national priority. Stand first, then Jordan, quickly, both of you. The declaration of war, I think we need it. They're in a war against us. I know there's some controversy on this, stand. How does it stand right now? Well, listen, the biggest missing piece on this, Jay, has been a commander in chief committed to destroying ISIS. This declaration of war would be a way, a very tangible and specific way that Congress and the American people could force his hand on this. Yes, it needs to be a strong one. It needs to make sure that it doesn't limit the president's authority like the president wanted. But I think it's time that the Congress step forward and really push the president on this one. Yeah, I, I agree. Jordan, quickly. Yeah, we need more. We need more direct action from this administration, whether it's abroad targeting ISIS or right here at home in focusing on Islamic extremism. And and they have to be able to identify it publicly and understand the fight and explain it to the American people. That's what's key. They never explain it. Well, that's going to do it for the broadcast this week. We've got a special here, so we're going to be seeing multiple episodes on this topic. Obviously, our thoughts and prayers with the people of Orlando and the first responders. What a horrible tragedy, but let's call it what it is, an act of jihadist terror. We have to defeat ISIS. We need a strategy, and that strategy has to include five concrete steps that we've outlined. We've outlined in this broadcast, aclj.org. That's aclj.org to sign that petition to defeat ISIS or 1-877-989. 2255. So it's aclj.org. That's the easiest way. Or 1 877 989 2255. We'll see you next week. The Islamic State, ISIS, wants to destroy America and eradicate Christianity. Jihadists pledging allegiance to ISIS and radical Islam have attacked America, slaughtering dozens of Americans in multiple terrorist attacks. President Obama refuses to acknowledge the enemy. His administration has failed to protect us. ISIS is at war with us. We must wage war against ISIS. At the ACLJ, we've developed a critical five-point strategy to defeat and destroy this jihadist enemy. We have five key steps to defeat ISIS. One, name the enemy. Islamic jihadists. Two, fix our broken intelligence. Three, ramp up undercover stings to smoke out jihadists at home. Four, declare war on ISIS. And five, unleash full U.S. military might to utterly destroy ISIS. Stand with us. Add your name to our new petition right now. Call 1-877-989-2255. That's 1-877-989-2255. Or add your name online, aclj.org.